What was it that made the attic vases so special and their imitation so difficult, not only by modern but also by contemporary would-be copiers, who were far more familiar with the ceramic art of that period than we are? The secret, as has been discovered by scientists today, lies in the clay. The earth of Attica provided the potters of Attica with the appropriate raw materials that enabled them to achieve not only a glaze unique in colour and resilience, but also a clay body of exceptional quality. And of course, the potters worthily exploited this gift, putting all their artistry and creativity in its service. The ancient Greeks used the rich clay deposits of Attica for making their vases, while it is quite possible that they use clays from the riverbanks too. The recent stratigraphical data from the excavations for the Athens metro have revealed a rich layer of mud and clay in the area of the Elos, the marsh on the banks of the river Eridanos. The riverbed is visible in the archaeological site of Keramikos, which takes its name from the settlement of potters, Keramis in Greek, that existed in the area. Riverine clay, usually grey in colour due to its organic content, is fine-grained and suitable for pottery making. After cleaning, mixing with water and kneading the clay, the potters formed the vases on the wheel, which was rotated by the foot or with the help of a slave. Next, the handles were affixed and then the vase was shaved on the wheel in order to make its walls thinner, and therefore lighter, as well as to render the details of the shape on the rim and the base. At this stage, the grooves, notches or incisions, all the features that represent the vase type, were made. When the vases had dried, they were decorated with clay paint in accordance with the style of the period. Paint for the vases was also prepared from clay, but not just any clay. The potters of ancient Athens paid great attention to selecting their raw materials, depending on the result they wanted to achieve, which means they were fully familiar with the properties. This is apparent also from the fact that the clay used for the body of the vases was different from that used for their paint. The clay paint was fired together with the vase creating its indelible decoration. The way in which it was applied was decisive for the final result. Before firing, the clay paint was reddish-orange in colour. It was transformed into black glaze through firing, which means that depending on the decorative style desired, black figure or red figure, it was applied differently. On black figure vases, which are the earlier ones, the figures and the decorative motifs are black and the ground is the red, the terracotta colour, of the body. The potters painted the figures, filling them with clay paint and rendered the details by incision and added colours, white and purple. When the vase was fired, the points that had been covered with clay paint turned black, while the grey clay took on a warm brick-red colour. Purple, which is actually mauve, was produced from ochres, oxides and hydroxides of iron, mixed with the clay paint, which on firing acquired a mauvish, sanguine hue. On red figure vases, which brought the revolution in the design of the period, the figures and the decorative motifs are reddish, reserved on the ground of the black glaze that covers the entire vase. Here, the outline and the details of the figures were painted first and the remaining body of the vase was painted all over so as to become black in firing. At the end, with a special tool and very thick clay paint, the relief lines were added and sometimes added colours, white and purple.
For the clay paint to give the desired flawless black glaze, the raw material had to be a clay earth rich in argillic minerals, iron and potassium, and poor in calcium oxides. Only thus could it produce the reactions that lead to the formation of magnetite. Concurrently, on mixing with water, it should form a colloidal suspension. When concentrated, this suspension gave an extremely fine clay paint with which the wheel-made vases were decorated. The vases were then fired by a very specific process and at very specific temperatures. This is known as iron reduction technique. With these characteristics in mind, scientists prospected Attica for red earths that may well have been used in antiquity. The first candidate deposit was identified in a lake on the Panactos Plateau between Attica and Boeotia, in an area now the property of the Titan cement industry. More recent researchers have identified suitable deposits also in East Attica, Markopolo, Koropi, Lavrion, and in areas around Mount Parnesse. 